Hello and welcome back to Trek Tuesdays. Today we are doing episode zero pilot uh, from the original Star Wars show. Like I said, uh, if you watched this last week, I've never actually seen an episode of the original series. If I have, I've only seen either major snippets or maybe two or three when I was really young. But suffice to say, I've never seen a... Uh, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I have not seen a full original series Star Trek episode in 30 years. I can make that blanket statement easily. Uh, so any memories is long past buried and gone, but again, just to introduce myself. My name is David, uh, coming from seven pound.com. Thank you for coming by and visiting with us. Make sure you hit the website for all our other good fun stuff here. But each week I'm going to go through an episode of Star Trek and see if I liked it. If I didn't like it, I'm not going to give like a grade. I'm just going to give like a thumbs up if it's worthy of watching thumbs down if it's not. And we'll kind of see how it goes, because again, Star Trek does tend to have a mythic standing, uh, especially the original cast. To me, I do know the movies. I've seen the movies dozens of times, depending on the quality. I've probably seen Wrath of Khan a hundred times, uh, to be quite honest with you. Motion picture, not so much. Maybe a dozen, if that. Just because I'm a, more of a movie guy and... Growing up in the 80s, it was easier to find than the original series, to be quite honest with you. But, again, a lot of the stuff I talked about with the other shows we talked about last week. So, let's get into Pilot. Uh, starts off, one thing I noticed watching the episode is just how cramped everything seemed. I know it's the same set that they used for the rest of the series, but it seemed cramped. I mean, it seemed like at one time they had almost, you know, double-digit figures on the bridge. You've got Pike sitting back there on his chair. You've got the helmsman. You've got the, I guess, assistant helmsman for whatever reason. You've got people standing beside each of them. You've got the yeoman who keeps bumping into uh, uh, Pike, which I'm guessing is supposed to be a running gag had the series been picked up like that. Uh, the pretty blonde, you know, the pretty little redhead just keeps bumping into him. He gets upset and comes out. She's got feelings for him. Uh, in this episode, which I couldn't really see going anywhere. You've got the dude that stands by the turbo lift who does nothing but stand there. Every now and again, he stiffens up when somebody walks by him, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You've got Pac who, Spock who just stands there and not really doing much. You've got people in the background just standing there looking around or looking down. It's a very cramped set, to be quite honest with you. Nobody really has names. I mean, even number one, who is, you know, as we all know, Lux on a toy, she doesn't even get a name. She's just called as number one, which, you know, they did kind of bring back for the next generation. But it just, you know, what are they all just standing around doing? Uh, you have the doctor comes back and forth, who's even older than McCoy, but she's a bit of a curmudgeon, you know, or excuse me, he's a bit of a curmudgeon. It's just, it's all very cramped. Another thing that I've noticed, and again, considering it's everybody, I kind of have to look at it as a creative choice. Everybody's very stiff as well. When they walk, they're stiff. There's no movement to any of them. They're all, they all seem very wooden. Like, uh, I'm guessing they're attempting to be military, but even in the military, you walk around normally. You know, you march when you're told to march. But if you get 20 guys and they're walking to the mess hall, we walk to the mess hall just like we're walking to the library, just like I would walk now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and I was in combat arms. If you want to talk stiff, I mean, not combat arms, but still. It's just kind of ridiculous, to be quite honest with you, just how wooden these people are. And I have to say, forgive me, Navy people, but... Considering this is a stellar Navy, Navy people are a lot less stiff than the Army are. I mean, you know, I could see if it was a Marine ship because Marines are kind of known for being stiff, you know, kind of wooden people anyway. But still, I mean, I wouldn't even think they're that stiff 24-7. Uh, of course, you know, my daughter's dating a Marine. I guess I could ask him. But last time I saw him, he didn't walk around like he had rods stuck in his legs. But anyway, neither here nor there. So they pick up a distress call, which is a 
common trope here as we come to find out which it's a trope in the other star wars episodes i'm guessing it's a trope in this one as well but they get a distress call and they want to come take a look at it and see what's going on landing party is assembled and they all beam down to go take a look at it and they see there's a camp of these older people and of course the one hot woman and they're talking about how their ship landed they get told they can get taken away and all this good stuff and then for some reason pretty much out of the blue they discover that oh no it's a fake sorry and pike is kidnapped and put in basically a zoo uh the woman is determined as more or less not real either and these guys in very interesting costumes come out and speak with telepathy which is always hilarious because you have a race that is nothing but telepaths why do they have vocal cords why can they speak when they won't it doesn't make any sense to me but you would almost think that a, a, nothing but telepaths not only would they not even worry about talking anymore but you would think they'd almost burn out the brains of a lesser species because you would think if you have that kind of mental cognition you would be almost like another gear than a regular human being. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But they can only hear they can also hear the thoughts, all that good fun stuff. So you have the ship being led by number one, all kind of confused, trying to find out what's going on, uh, trying to get Pike back, and their weapons are ineffective on everything. The mental people are even so powerful they can make the guns and stuff not fire. And even though for some reason they beam down some kind of gun which is able to tap into the ship's power, they still can't burn their way through the elevator. Until a bit later where they actually do find out that, oh, it's just an illusion and they did burn through the elevator in the little rocky outcropping. So they're able to go inside, find out what's going on with Pike, and everybody escape. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'll be honest with you. Spock's the only one that comes back, and he doesn't do much. He is definitely a third wheel. He is definitely, in my opinion, a bit of an afterthought, it seemed. Uh, he just doesn't do much because you've got... So much emphasis put in with Pike. So much stuff put in with number one. I mean, the Yeoman is a more developed character, I guess, or, or set up character than Spock is. I don't see what the, the point of Spock is at this point. Because between Pike, the Doctor, the Yeoman, number one, Spock is a distant fifth. And to tell you the truth, the quote-unquote engineer might actually be ahead of him. Because at least he does come up with something. Uh, the little brain dudes with the whole trying to figure out about how to control Pike to make him love the, the little Vena woman. That to me seems kind of ignorant. We turn to find out that they can't read the thoughts of rages involved, which is ignorant. It's just a bit of a sloppy episode. The sci-fi is a bit sloppy. Uh, this was a very expensive show to do from everything that I've read. And I just don't see where all the money went, to be quite honest with you. I'm just not impressed with it. So I'm going 0 for 1 so far. The pilot is a very skippable episode outside of it. Just the, the fact that it's episode 0. I mean, if this was episode five or six there'd be no reason to ever watch this i can definitely see why nbc didn't want to pick this up i can kind of see why roddenberry had an affair with number one is kind of why they did away with number one to be quite honest with you uh the whole green woman makeup thing kind of mm, that kind of got a groan for me because i know the whole orion slave girl thing is like a star War or star trek trope coming up and you know Vena just doesn't do much for me. She's, you kind of don't know what's going on with her. I mean, if the if the brain race is trying to use humans to repopulate, got to be weird ways to do this. 
And if they have the power to actually shut down the ship, why didn't they make the other ship crash? Uh, now that they know more about humans from the first ship that crashed, why aren't they making every ship crash down? And to be quite honest with you, the whole resolution just seems slapped together. Uh, just doesn't seem like there's much of a just doesn't seem much of a point to it to be quite honest with you it's kind of like oh humans are just too unpredictable and too this and too that we don't we don't want to repopulate with y'all and now that you've seen how vena actually is uh y'all just carry your ass because we don't need you we'll make an illusion for her she'll be happy until she dies hopefully soon and we'll just die out have a nice life Pike's like deuces, and he's gone. Uh, <laughs> but there's just not... It's just not a good show. It's just not a good episode. It's just not well done. It's just not well written. Uh, I'm sure I'll get talking about Pike versus Kirk, but I can definitely see how Pike's... You know, I'm, I'm here for to keep, to keep 203 lives available... And I'm just tired of it. Might quit already. Oh, man, it's episode one, dude. Why are you whining already? You just got here. You know, and he's already whining about quitting. And like I said, I just... Nobody here I really cared about, including Spock. It's just... Everybody's wooden. Everybody... Nobody's really developed. The yeoman seems like a... Is she going to be bumbling? Or is she just bad luck? Or is this just some way to create artificial tension? I, I just don't get it. Uh, again, I'm kind of glad they scrapped it and redone it because there are much better shows coming on later. <laughs> Even if I don't like any of these episodes. But so far, I'm 0 for 1. Uh, agree, disagree, put it down in the comments. We'll have a short... Uh, if I get any comments, we'll talk about it next week. And anything you want to talk about, shoot at me below. Make sure you hit the website. Again, I appreciate you dropping by. And I'll see you next week for, I guess version 1.1 of Star Trek. Uh, and thank you for coming by. See ya.